The Dice Odyssey! Guys, I think I found the way out. It's over this way. Guys? Where'd y'all go? It's like a labyrinth in this tomb. Oh, hey! Thank you so much for joining the Dice Odyssey today. I'm Kaz, Kaz the Adventurer. Anyway, we're gonna be talking about a game called Tomb Trader. Now, if you couldn't tell, this has a very striking resemblance to Indiana Jones. And I was just inside this inner part of this giant tomb that I found out here in the jungle, and all of a sudden, all these other adventurers decided to join me, and we all started arguing about the treasure that we were gonna take. We were trying to negotiate with each other who was gonna take what, as you could tell, I got the sword. And uh, yeah, but the problem was we didn't realize we only had a minute to do it, and then all of a sudden, a booby trap started and the whole place started collapsing. Give him the whip. Throw me the idol. No time to argue. Throw me the idol. I throw you the whip. Give me the whip. Adios, senor. I don't know what's happened to the people of the outer tomb. I'm hoping the same thing didn't happen to them. But anyway, let me show you how this game is played. And I will get back to you with my final thoughts. Oh my gosh, who the heck is that? Rusty. First thing that's going to happen is you're going to go ahead and get passed out a hidden role. Okay, you can be an alchemist, you can be a professor, you can be a gambler, you can be an artist, you can be a taxonomist, you can be the hunter. Which, come on, you know who that is. I mean, it's obvious. And you can be the collector. You can basically be the guy from the mummy that tags along with everybody else and ultimately ends up getting killed. So anyway, each character is going to have a very specific type of treasure that they want. And what's going to happen is for each piece of treasure that they get successfully, they're going to be able to get extra specific uh, points or coins in the game. So basically, at the end of the game, this is going to count for more money, whatever the treasure is. And then also, you're going to get an outside the tomb card. Look at the beautiful artwork and an inside the tomb card, okay? Each person's going to get that. Now, you're also gonna be receiving three tokens or three coins, okay? Now, the way the game's gonna be set up is you're gonna be setting the game up with the inner tomb and the outer tomb. Now, this is for a three to four player game. Flip it over, you got five to six player. The game's gonna take place over several rounds depending on player count. So what you can do is place that in the middle of the uh, game board or the, the play area. And then you're going to take out however many treasures that is required for each side and they'll tell you on the cards. So you pick one of these cards and you say, hey, we wanna to go to the outer tomb, okay? But nobody else knows that, right? So what you're gonna do is place this card face down. Everybody's gonna do the same exact thing. And then at the same time, you know, you can do a countdown or what have you. And then everybody's gonna choose at the same time. Oh, and so let's say this person over here chose to go to the inside of the tomb and this other person decided to go to the outside of the tomb with you. And now what you're gonna do, and you can get anybody to do this with their cell phone, is place a timer down for 60 seconds and you've got 60 seconds to now negotiate what you find at each tomb. And by the way, the person who went to the inner tomb right here, they're the only one that went there. They get half of whatever treasure's there, okay? That's kind of cool. So they can get it all, you know, get or get a pretty good amount. And as, you know, the game progresses, you're going to be having more and more and more and more treasures go out, not just three and two. But the people who went to the outside of the tomb, uh, you know, your character and whoever else, they're going to be coming up here and they're going to be now negotiating for whatever they see, okay? I mean, you can negotiate with money. You can negotiate with certain kinds of treasures saying, I'll take the snake by you know if if i can get the bone dice or whatever you're most time you're trying to get what's on your card anyway that helps you at the end game get more points if you don't get it resolved within a minute whatever side of the tomb you're on is going to collapse and nobody gets any treasure and that way you basically lost the round and that's basically how rounds are resolved and once that happens all the treasure gets moved off into their respective locations and new uh treasure guards gonna come out of that treasure deck again it's very simple now let's take a look at some of these cards. Well, some cards are going to kind of give you kind of a uh, 
a hint at who this would go best with. For example, this alchemy tome can go best with these two characters. It's also worth three points. If you take a look, this gun, it works with the hunter, works with that guy. It also tells you it has a special ability. This gun, you get to choose a player's next location. So it's kind of a take that card, especially if somebody messes you over in a, in a negotiation deal before. It's worth three coins at the end of the game. So basically, at the end of the game, you're going to be counting up all these coins. You're going to be counting up the value of the cards. You're also going to be looking on your player, uh, your hidden roll card, and figuring out how many extra coins you're going to get. Player with the most points at the end wins. Uh, just so you know, I did get away from that monster. I think I've seen it somewhere in a D&D &D campaign before. I got it hung on my wall when it shot that thing to death. But anyway, uh, I survived, as you can obviously see. But I want to go ahead and get into the game and tell you what I thought of it. This game was awesome. I love good quick filler games. Um, I, I mean, obviously I like a big good strategy game too. You know, I like games like Star Wars Rebellion. Um, I'm gonna keep saying Star Wars, you know, Darth Vader's here. He might force choke me if I don't keep saying Star Wars. Star Wars Imperial Assault, Star Wars Armada, which I've got most of my Armada stuff up there on one of my shelves. Uh, love these games. But I also like quick, fun filler games. And I'll just be honest with you, there's not a lot of them now, at least a lot that I've played, that have great themes on them specifically, like an Indiana Jones style theme, okay? That is one of the biggest things that sell me on There's a lot of negotiation games out there. There's a lot of games that you could easily get that are probably similar priced maybe, but I'll be honest, this is one of my more fun ones, uh, one of the more fun ones for me personally. And I'll just say this, our group kept on wanting to play it and play it and play it and play it and play it. And I'll say this, I enjoy it at pretty much almost any player count. I think it goes from three to six. I like the fact that it plays a crown. I'm not as much of a fan of it as at three. Yes, it's, it is a little bit quicker, but it is all simultaneous actions anyway. But the fact is, is that with three players, it's not as much talking going on. I mean, there's some, but it's kind of like, yeah, okay, we'll get this, we'll get that, so on and so forth. Yes, the game does balance out. Probably sweet spot for me would be between four and six, right? So let me go ahead and get into the artwork. The artwork, again, look at the box. It's absolutely beautiful, okay? Every one of these cards from the player, the, the, the hidden rolls that you get, which I'm going to get into in a second. Uh, okay, come on now. You're telling me that is not Indiana Jones, right? Or Rick O'Connell, I think his name is, from The Mummy, all right? Which, by the way, if you notice, if you remember the first Mummy back in 1999, wow, well, that's an old movie. Now, according to some, uh, Benny would be wearing this, one of my favorite characters because he's such a sleaze. But anyway, the whole game, and I'm going to throw some pictures up, the whole game, we were throwing out uh, all sorts of fun little quotes and other things from the movies. I mean, anything from, for example, like if Rick and Benny were talking, you know, he'd always be like, bye, Benny, and he'd throw him over the, the, the side of a boat or whatever, you know, or... Uh, for example, when it comes to some of the cards, all right, some of the, the loot cards you get, which by the way, I like the fact that not all the loot cards are good for you. Uh, for example, the snake bite cards, snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? You know, that kind of thing. Cursed jar, uh, things that kind of hurt you in the long run, right? And then I love the artwork because it tends to draw you deeper into that Indiana Jones tomb raiding you know, style theme, right? Which is something I really like. I grew up watching the Indiana Jones movies, as I'm sure most of y'all have, uh, and the Mummy movies, for example. There's a lot of those kind of telltale things that come out of these cards. And uh, I really like some of the other loot cards, for example. I like the fact that you have cards, not only that you're getting for to to increase just your your point count at the end i also like the fact that you have cards where you're able to attack other people especially if they screwed you over in a negotiation deal you had earlier on that's another aspect let's go ahead and get into some of the mechanics i really like the the aspect of being able to choose kind of which way you might go you're going to go inside the tomb or outside the tomb right you have to pick one of those two cards you lay them forward and you all flip simultaneously and there's a cool element to that because if you play enough games of this 
you're able to start reading people around you and that goes into the hidden roles as well the hidden roles being that you know whoever you take they're going to be wanting to more go for certain kinds of loot right some of them even have certain kind of player powers for example the hunter who's supposed to be the indiana jones uh type character hey if you get a treasure map the game will basically give you one more counted towards your goal and i like that because after a few you know because you play over several rounds of this after several rounds you start to kind of see where people are going who they what they might be going for you might be able to slightly deduce which character a person might be i had somebody pegged as a hunter earlier on in one of the uh one of the first games that we actually played of this because of what things they kept going for now again that's not across the board because some people some roles do uh the similar items as well but it's still fun to try to deduce those things so in when I come down to bluffing, uh, if I see somebody who's going for a lot of treasure map pieces and I decide I want to go into an area where they're going to go to try to block them, which creates more of a meta tension at the table because now you have more of a goal in mind. It's not just getting what you want on your player, uh, your hidden role. It's also going after your friends at the table, especially, again, I'm going back to it. If anybody screwed you over the table, it's just fun to be able to go back and get them back. It has kind of a slight take that element to the game. So, yeah, I like all of that. And again, I am a sucker for hidden hidden roles. I'm a sucker for variable player powers, which there are some with the, with these. Um, but yeah, overall, I like negotiation too. I like to be able to freely to, to wheel and deal at the table with people and go, oh no no no, I, I'll give you this much money if you'll you know do this, uh, you know blah, blah 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 blah. And I like that. I like that. Now. One thing that I could say might be a con for this game would be, I, I know I said I like it from four to six players, it can get a little crazy at the table with so many people talking uh, over each other at times because, you know, you might have uh, four people, let's say we had a six-player game, you might have four people to go to one location and then the other two go to another, right? And so, you know, let's say a round table like this, for example, they might be two of them talking across and the rest of us are talking across and so it gets a little jumbled, right? But if you if you can just kind of mediate that at the table, like, all right, guys, just, you know, let's let's cool it and let's try to get these deals done it's it's not so bad i mean it's a slight con it's a nitpick more than anything uh one other little nitpick i would say and somebody else brought this up at the table uh the tokens yeah it would have been nice if the tokens had a little bit more oomph to them you know as it is they're very bland kind of you know i mean baseless there's really nothing on them it would have been nice to see some kind of a inscription or make it look like aztec gold yeah. minor nitpicks aside i think this game's great if you like negotiation if you like trying to make deals at the table uh you know and you don't mind that's another thing you don't mind that real time 60 second time frame right because you know within 60 seconds you don't you don't make your deals everybody loses who's in the same side of the tomb that you're in right and it is kind of cool that uh you know sometimes once in a blue moon somebody's able to go to one side of the tomb and still take half the goods there if they're the only person that goes i had i saw that happen a few times when we played in several games and it's really cool because that person's like oh my gosh i thought you guys would have joined me over here look at all this good stuff but see the thing is people are so focused on their hidden role goals that they're going for the other side of the team that works best for them so sometimes that works out to your advantage so sometimes you want to go okay i think i see what these guys might be going for i'm going to go to the other side too maybe i'll get more treasure that way so again fun filler game awesome 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 i give this i have that you know that beard rating system as of right now, I am giving this, based on fun factor, the artwork, the mechanisms, how many times we wanted to keep playing it over and over and over, and how many people really love this game, I'm giving this at least a full beard. That's going to be a 9 out of 10 for me. Uh, and yeah, this game deserves it. This game deserves it. I think so many people who want a good, fast, fun filler that's going to be a little bit of uh, strategy involved in it. But again, it's, it's just so much fun. Uh, I think you should add this to your collection, especially if you like Indiana Jones, right? Anyway, thanks again so much for watching the Dice Odyssey videos. How about you? Have you had a chance to play Tomb Trader? Have you had a chance? Do you, do you like negotiation games in general? Are you somebody that likes those those timer style games right that gives you a time limit you have to rush through it or are you somebody gets kind of frustrated about that please let me know down in the comments thank you so much you have a blessed day and game away